Hi! In this video, I will show you Fermat's primality test. Fermat's primality test is a primality test, so it tells you if a number is prime or composite. In previous videos, we saw some simpler primality tests, like the Siebel-Ferratus-Thenus and trial division. Unlike those algorithms, Fermat's primality test is polynomial in the size of the input. Okay, so we are in our primality directory where we left off, and here we have implemented two primality tests, the trial division test and the test based on Rajasthenia sieve, and we will create a new primality test called Fermat, and let's write our classical primality test signature. We will fill this in later, let's say pass for now. Let's just write a small test, let's call this actually Canda, and we will print the numbers just for, for small trial, we will print the numbers that are prime. Okay, before we go on to implement this, uh, let's go to the whiteboard and um, talk about Fermat's uh, little theorem. So Fermat's little theorem is a theorem that concerns prime numbers. So this is Fermat's theorem. And um, what this says is that if I take a prime number, so for all p, where p is a prime number, I write this as for all p in primes, we have a, st a statement that holds for all primes. So for all p that belongs to the prime numbers, we have a statement that holds. And this statement says if I take any number, so I write this as for all alpha, and this number has to be um, within this group, so I will just say that this number is, uh, is an integer, so it's a natural number, and the condition is that this number is bigger than or equal to 1, and it has to be less than p. Okay, so if we have these numbers, then this is what Fermat's little theorem says. Um, if I take a and raise it to the power p minus 1, then this is going to equal 1 if I'm working modulo p. So this is a, a slightly complicated statement, so let's take a quick look at it and try to understand it. I will not prove it in this video. I will make another video to, uh, to include the proof of this, but let's just understand what it's trying to say. So if I take p, which is a prime number, take p as a prime, and then I take another number, a, which is somewhere between 1 and p, then I can raise this number to the power p minus 1. So this is a times a times a, but I take this number modulo p. So I take the take the modulo of this exponentiation uh, and I take it modulo p. And if I take it modulo p, the result is 1. Okay, so this is uh, quite a mouthful. And uh, notice that this holds for all, for all prime numbers. So Fermat's test is um, a primality test that says, okay, well, since this, whole, this is this is a theorem that holds for prime numbers. What we can do is we can test if it's actually true from the for the number we are trying to prove as uh, as prime. So we take we get a candidate p, and uh, what we do is we get a we we uh, guess a number a, and um, we evaluate a to the p minus first power, and we check if its modulo is one. Uh, in the group modulo p. So um, let's see let's see how this will be implemented. So let's say for um, for some a we will find out what this a is later. But let's say we have some some of this a. Um, what we want to do is we want to calculate the power of the candidate to the eighth. Uh, sorry, for uh, a to the candidate minus one power. So notice here in the whiteboard p is the candidate and a is the base. So here this is the base and this is the candidate. And it's important to note that this number a to the p minus 1 can be quite large if the primality test concerns large numbers. So uh, because we are working modulo some p, what we can do is we can pass um, the modulo 
as a parameter to the pal function. And um, this pal implementation takes three parameters, the base of the uh, exponentiation, the exponent of the exponentiation, and some modulo. And this is implemented using fast exponentiation in Python. Do check my other video uh, about how this works quickly. Okay, so we get this, and let's call this uh, result, right? This is the exponentiation. And what we want to do is we want to test if rest is equal to 1. So if rest is equal to 1, then this means that this satisfies the condition that is satisfied by all primes. So we will say, okay, this is probably prime, and otherwise, um, this is not a prime. So here we are saying that this violates the condition of all primes. If rest were a prime, this could not possibly be true. So this is definitely a composite number. All right, now the, that we have done this, the problem is how do we determine A? And the problem is we can't just hard code A because, well, if candidate is a prime number, then that means that this holds for all A. However, if P is a composite number, then this condition may hold for some A and may be violated by some other A. And it's difficult to, um, to guess which, which A's are the right ones. So what Fermat did in this case is um, he, he proposed that we randomize this case. So Fermat's algorithm is a randomized algorithm. It's a probabilistic algorithm. So what we will do is we will um, attempt to generate a random number here. So from random I will import rand range. Rand range is like range except it, instead of returning the whole range it returns a random number within that range. And we want to go from 2 to candidate minus 2. Okay, uh, because obviously if you take, well, of course you have to be from 1 up to candidate minus 1, but if you take 1 or the candidate of minus 1, it's kind of trivial that this power will be equal to 1. So we don't need to waste our time testing these. Okay, and uh, this is basically for Matt's test. However, as I mentioned, the A's for which this condition will hold um, may not be always, uh, um, well, it may not always hold, right? If you, if you choose a random A, it may be so that uh, P is composite and the condition still holds. And so um, in order to see that the, the uh, number is a prime, what we will do is we will test this for many different A's. Uh, and the number of A's that we will test this for, let's call this K. So we will attempt this for K different A's, K different random A's. We will try to raise A to the power of P minus 1 and take it modulo P and see if this is equal to 1. Okay, so um, let's loop. So let's say for I in range K, so this is repeated K times. Uh, and what we will do here is, well, if rest is not equal to 1, then we know for sure that this is a non-prime, a composite number. And specifically, um, A is a compositeness witness for the candidate. But if this condition doesn't hold, so if rest is equal to 1, then we cannot know that um, candidate is surely a prime. It may be a prime or it may be a composite number. So after we repeat this enough times, we can say we are fairly sure that this number is prime. So this is the idea behind Fermat's uh, primality test. And um, what we will do here is we will set k to 20, which is a good uh, rule of thumb value. And let's see if this works. So let's, uh, let's try it out. Um, okay, so notice that run range requires a low and a high to uh, to output a non-empty range. And um, notice that if candidate is too low, then this test will not work. So we will add a special case here and say, okay, if candidate is less than 10, then we actually can hard code the fact that some numbers are prime. So if candidate is in this in this range here, two, three, five, seven, these are the prime numbers below 10. So we will return true in these cases, and if it's less than 10 but not in this range, we will return false. And the rest of the algorithm will work fine because run range is well defined. 
Okay, obviously these are hard coded, but the rest uh, look actually um, like prime numbers. And I don't actually remember the prime numbers, so let's go to uh, Wikipedia and see what the first prime numbers are to just validate that our algorithm is working. Uh, okay, so here are the first prime numbers. Uh, let's see if this is right. 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31, 37. Okay, this seems to be working. Uh, it's it's quite interesting that it's working. All right. Um, cool. And um, I set a default value of k is equal to 20 so that I don't have to pass it here. One interesting thing about format is that it can work with really large candidate numbers. So you, you're seeing here that we're not doing any repetitions based on the value of candidate. So this algorithm is quite fast. It's not exponential like the um, trial division algorithms. It is polynomial in the size of the input. So that's it's pretty great. Um, maybe we can try a large, larger prime number. Um, so let's see the first prime numbers. Let's find a larger prime and test it and see how it works out. So this is the first 10,000 primes. Let's take this one and put it in and see if it works quickly. All right. So let's see if this is a prime number. It should say yes. Otherwise, it should say no. And it's, it's a prime number. Now let's test another number that is not a prime. Let's say, um, I think this is not a prime. So you can see it's, it's not a prime. And uh, it should say no in this case. So you can see it's fairly quick, and we can test even larger, larger numbers. And one thing we can do is uh, we can multiply two, two of these numbers, uh, let's say this one and this one. These are numbers that are difficult to factorize. It's, it's quite a large number here. You can see this is a composite number that has two slightly larger prime factors, and we can test if it's a prime number. And it tells us no, so it's actually detecting its compositeness, which is um, quite cool. Now, one issue with the um, format test is we, we can't really know um, the probability of its success. It's a uh, it's a randomized test, and it may have uh, it may have problematic behavior. And um, before we go into that, I just want to mention that um, this algorithm the, this algorithm's complexity. So, uh, if we can see big O and measure how how much this is okay so this is going to take k repetitions and as we said this this pow function is taking um, polylog uh, of um, of well candidate because a is going to be up to, to candidate and the exponent is going to be up to candidate and if you want to check why the pow mod function is polylog uh, please check my other videos on how pow mod is implemented so you can see that this algorithm is polynomial in the size of the input, which is candidate. And if we take k is equal to 20, which is a reasonable value, then um, this works reasonably well and the complexity is not too large. That's great. Uh, so this algorithm is appropriate for uh, cryptographic applications, except for the case where um, it may fail. So let's see where this algorithm may fail. And uh, let's go back to the theorem that we have here. And notice that this theorem talks only about prime numbers. So it says that for all p that are prime, we have this, uh, this theorem, right? If, if p is a prime, then all of this holds. So if you try various a's, this will hold. It doesn't say anything about the composites, right? Um, and the problem with this theorem is that it cannot really be used as it is, as a primality test, and this is a problem with Fermat's um, algorithm. The problem is that there are specific uh, composite numbers called the Carmichael numbers. So let's write this out. This, these are the uh, Carmichael numbers. And the Carmichael numbers are composite numbers where this test fails quite often. And in fact, it fails almost everywhere except where we can find a factoring of the Carmichael number. So this is um, these numbers are quite rare, so Carmichael numbers are not very very common, but uh, they do exist, they are composite numbers, and um, they make the Fermat test flawed essentially, because w if, if you happen to come across one of these numbers, then the test will fail. 
And um, I will try one of these numbers here. So this is 9357940881. Okay, so this is a Carmichael number that is, uh, well, it's somewhat large, but not too large. So let's see, this is a composite number, and I'm guessing that the Fermat test will say that this is prime. Actually, it happened to detect one of the factors, but if we run it again, it may fail. So it says here that, uh, yes, this is actually a prime, while uh, it actually isn't. So let's try one more time, it's saying yes, and then it's saying yes. So this no was a lucky guess, because it happened to come across one of the A's that um, had a common factor with the number, but this is actually quite rare for Carmichael numbers. And uh, you can see that this number is not prime by checking its factor. So if we go to Wolfram Alpha and say factorize this number, it will tell us that I think 73 is one of the one of the factors. Right, so this 73 is one of the factors. And you can readily see that if the number becomes quite larger, if we add more digits to the number, and it maintains two or three prime factors that are large. It is quite rare to find one of the um, one of the trials that make it um, well that factor it. So we cannot simply just uh, go ahead and guess one of these a's. Uh, one nice thing about the Fermat test is that um, most numbers are not Carmichael numbers, and for those numbers that are not Carmichael numbers, if you take a random a, then it's very likely that this number will be one of these witnesses, so it will witness the compositeness of the number. Um, we can fix actually for Matt's uh, compositeness test, we can we can fix this primality test to make it always correct, um, and this is called the Miller-Rabin primality test, but this will be the subject of the next video. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. If you have questions or suggestions, leave a comment in the section below. Till next time, so long.